All right, one more truth table example that I wanna work through. This one's a three variable truth table example, unlike the last one that I did. There was a tr two variable truth table example. And the reason why is the last example only involved the letters P and Q. But this one you see P's, Q's, and R's, three different variables. Much like the last one, you can write this purely symbolically or you can try to write it in English. What you see is when you end up with three variables and lots of different conjunctions, it can be kind of hard to write it in English without being ambiguous. So you need lots of parentheses and stuff typically, which just looks weird when you're writing in English. So typically what people do is they write them symbolically when you get to this level of abstraction. But I wanted to show it both ways. To be clear, what you see in blue is the exact same question as what you see asked in red. The first step is the same first step that we had before we got to set up our truth table. Because there's three variables, P, Q, and R, we need columns for each of those three, which will create eight different rows that we have to fill in. The reason there's eight is two times two times two gives us eight. These rows don't have to be written in the order that I'm about to write them in, but this is the standard order that these are written in. You can write them in different orders as long as you make sure that you capture each of the eight possible scenarios. So the easiest way to make sure you capture each of the eight possible scenarios is if you, is if you have some sort of method for filling them out. A method that I came up with to try to explain this to people is thinking about charging for the Fs. So if you want to put an F in this column, this column, or this column, you got to pay for it. Fs over here are the cheapest. They only cost you $1. Fs over here are twice as expensive, so they cost you $2. And then Fs over here are twice as expensive as that, so they cost you $4. If we had four variables, we'd add another variable over here, and that one would cost us $8. And then what you do is you make your first row as cheap as possible, and you continue to add rows until your row is as expensive as possible. So if I'm charging for Fs, my cheapest row will be a row that doesn't have any Fs in it at all. Just T, T, and T. My most expensive row would be if I bought an F in each of these different three columns, if I had F, F, and F. So I'm gonna to continue to add rows until I get to that F, F, F. This row that I already added cost me nothing. The next row will cost me one and then two and then three and four. And just continue in this fashion until you get all the way up to whatever the most expensive row is. It'll turn out that the most expensive row costs $7, but you don't even need to know that at this point. You can just continue to add numbers to your list here until you get to all Fs. So think about it like you have $1 and you wanna purchase these Fs. Well, if you only have $1, you can't afford any of these and you can't afford any of these, but you could afford one of these so you could buy that F. Now you're out of money, so you can't buy any more Fs, so you're left to fill these in with just Ts. Over here, I got $2. If I'm going shopping for Fs, now I can afford an F over here. I can afford one of these $2 Fs. I've used all my money, so I'm forced to just, just put Ts in the rest of the columns. $3, you can afford a $2 F, and then you still have a dollar left over, so you can afford a $1 F. Now you spend all your money, so everything else is just a T. $4, now you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You can purchase one of these expensive Fs over here. Now you got a little bit of regret because you have no money left, so you're left filling these out with just Ts. $5, you could buy the expensive $4 F, and you'd still have a dollar left to buy the cheap $1 F, then everything else is just a T. $6, you could buy the $4 F and also the $2 F, but then you're out of money, so you gotta put a T over here. And finally, with $7, you can buy everything you want. You can buy a $4 F, still got three bucks left, you can buy a $2 F, you still have a dollar left, you can buy a $1 F. Because I've gotten to the most expensive possible rows, Fs everywhere, I know I'm done. If you really hate that and you think it's stupid and you don't like that $1, $2, $4 thing, if you're comfortable with the order we wrote these in the two variable case, if you have these four rows memorized, you might notice that there's a copy of that right here. And then there's another copy of that down here. So if you had the above memorized, you could fill out this square and then you could copy that again in this square. And then you could just remember that in the first copy, you throw on all T's to the left of it. And in the second copy, you tack on all F's to the left of it. Whatever works for you, whatever can get you to this stage is perfect. And for what it's worth, I always start students with this. I think a lot of classes, you'll have this to begin with. You won't have to come up with this on your own. Now I wanna do my negations. So for my negations, I go up here and look at my statement or over here and I look for nots. I look for this not R and this not P, this not R and this not P. Note that nowhere in here does it say not Q. So since not Q is never even referenced, I don't need a not Q column. I mean, you can put it in if you want, but it'd be a waste. All we're ever gonna reference is not P and not R. So those are the only two columns I really need to fill out. For not P, all you gotta do is realize that this references the P column and negation, not here, just means write the opposite of. So look at this column and write the opposite of what you see. See a T here, you're gonna write an F here. 
See a T here, you're gonna write an F here. Again, a T here means an F here, and a T here means an F here. And then you get down to an F here, the opposite of an F is a T, so I'd write a T over here. F tells me T, F tells me T, F tells me T. Do the same thing in this column, except instead of referencing this column and writing the opposites, you're gonna reference this column and write the opposites. Why? Because it says not R. So of course you're gonna reference the R column. T tells me to write an F, F tells me to write a T. T tells me to write an F, F tells me to write a T, and just continue in that fashion. It's worth pointing out that if you write these in the correct order, if these are written in a correct order for you, then there's gonna be a lot of logic, there's gonna be a lot of patterns going on here. Oh, four T's, then four F's. So it's easy enough to just fill this out with four F's, then four T's. Oh, this just alternates between T's and F's, starting with a T. Then this is just gonna alternate between T's and F's, starting with an F. Now that I've got all my negations done, I wanna look for conjunctions, but not any conjunction, conjunctions that connect together two different things that I already have columns for. What am I talking about? Right here, for example, you see the or conjunction, this or. I cannot figure out this or right now because this or connects a Q, which I do have, with a P and not R, which I don't yet have. So I can't tackle, the, I can't tackle this conjunction. Similarly, I can't tackle this conjunction because it connects together a not P, which is okay, with Q or P and not R, which I don't yet have. So I can't do this conjunction yet, I can't do this conjunction yet, but I can do this conjunction. This and right here is ready to go because it connects together two things, P and not R, that I already have columns for, right? The P exists right here, and the not R exists right here. So I'm completely ready to write P and not R as long as I know what the and symbol tells me. And the way to think about the and symbol is you only get to write a T in this column if there is a T in this column and also in this column. So you're looking for two T's. So in this first row, do I have two T's? I got a T over here, but I do not have a T right here. Remember, I'm looking at the two columns with asterisks next to them. I do not have two T's, so I put an F over here. What about this next row? Oh, I do have two T's this time. There's a T here and there's a T here, so I got to put my T over here. Third one, I got a T and an F, that's not enough, so I get an F here. Fourth one, I got a T and a T, two T's again, that's great, I gotta put a T right here. Continuing down, and now I'm at a row where I have an F and another F, not even close, so I'm gonna put an F over here. An F and a T, nope, not quite enough, that's only one T, I needed two of them. An F and an F, again, not even close. And then an F and a T, not quite there. I'm gonna fill out this row in this order. This might be overkill, but with the and conjunction, you only get to write a T if you have a pair of T's in the two columns that you're referencing. So only these circled guys. Now I'm ready to tackle another conjunction. I'm gonna tackle this or right here, which is this or over here. I can now do this because this or connects together a Q and this thing that's in parentheses. And this thing that's in parentheses is the pink column that I just figured out. So now that I have this pink column, namely this thing in parentheses, I have both of the arguments that this OR conjunction is connecting, the Q and the P and not R. And to fill this one out, I need to focus on the conjunction that I'm dealing with. This conjunction is the OR conjunction, and the OR conjunction is kind of similar to the AND conjunction that we just did. It's just easier to put a T down. Remember over here, I could only get a T if I had a pair of T's in the two columns that I was referencing. Over here I get a T if I have at least one T in the two columns that I'm referencing. So now I'm looking at this Q and this P and not R, and I'm just asking myself the question, do I see at least one T? Well, in the first row, I got a T right here, so I must have at least one T, I gotta put a T over here. Don't worry about the fact that there's an F here, it doesn't matter, you just need at least one T. Over here I got a T here, and also a T here, more than I even needed, but that's fine, I get a T. In this next row, there's an F here and there's an F here. I don't see any T's at all, so I can't put my T over here, I instead put an F. In this next row, I got an F and a T, which gives me a T, I have at least one T. In this next row, I have a T and an F, which again is at least one T. Next one, I got a T and an F, again, at least one T. Then I get an F and an F, that's not gonna work, that's no T's at all, so I'll put an F down here. And then finally, an F and an F, gives me another F down here. I'm almost done, which is a good thing, because I'm kind of running low on colors that don't start to look the same. Sorry to any colorblind folk out there. What I wanna do now is tackle my last conjunction, which is this arrow here, which corresponds with the if-then part of this statement. 
Note that it's okay to tackle this conjunction now because it connects together two things that we have columns for. This connects together not P with everything that's in these parentheses, namely Q or P and not R. So it'll be this column and this column that I'm referencing as I fill out this column. This looks intimidating, right? This looks impossible. I'm never gonna be able to figure this out. Well, it's not that bad if you just take it one step at a time. The conjunction that I'm dealing with is this arrow right here. This arrow connects together two columns that I've already made, this column and this column. So everything else in this chart, I'm completely ignoring. I'm just staring at this and this. And then all I need to know is what is the rule that tells me how to deal with this arrow? What is the if then rule? And it's the weirdest of the different rules I tried to explain either in a previous video or in the comments of a previous video why it is the way it is. But rather than get into too much theory here, why don't I just tell you how you deal with this arrow whenever you see this arrow. And it's a two-step process. First, you focus on the if. So in this case, the if is not P. The if is this column right here. And if I see a T in this column, then I've got work to do. Then there's got to be a second step. But if I'm lucky enough to see an F in this column, then I'm done. If you see an F, in the if column, you're completely done. You get your T for free. There's no work to do. I see an F here, so I'm gonna put a T right here. I see an F here, so I'm gonna put a T over here. I see an F here, I'm gonna put a T here. I see an F here, I'm gonna put a T here. I get those for free. I don't even have to worry about this column. If you see an F in the if column, the not P column in this case, you get your T over here for free. You're completely done. And then you're like, oh, okay, so if I see a T, does that mean I put an F down here? No. If you see a T in this column, then you're not lucky. Then you got a little bit more work to do. If there's an F, you're done. You don't have any work to do. If you see a T, then you have some work to do. And the extra work that I have to do is, if you see a T here, you get your T over here. But if you don't see a T here, you don't get your T over here. So what I'm saying is because there's a T here, I reference this column. When I'm referencing this column, I look for a T. I see one, great, I put a T over here. Because there's a T here, I have work to do. I have to reference this column. There's a T here, great, I get a T here. Because there's a T here, I have work to do. I have to reference this column. I have an F here, so I put an F over here. Because there's a T here, I have work to do. I reference this column. There's an F here, I put another F over here. It's tempting to be like, wait a minute, you had an F over here, how come you didn't put that F right here? It's because I never even referenced this F. If you see an F, in the if column, you're done. You never look at what you see in silver. F's here, you're completely done. You gotta put down your answer. It's only the T's over here that cause you to do more work. Look at the silver column. This column would end up being our final answer. So it'd be the end of this example.